Welcome to a very special edition of Behind the Scenes. We're here today with film producer Angela White. I'm going to share a little bit about her. Entertainment executive, film producer. She was honored by African American Women in Cinema. Her latest produced film is A Question of Faith. And we're going to talk a great deal about that today. Hello, Tom. She is the founder of Silver Lining Entertainment, LLC, a family-owned multimedia entertainment company based in L.A. She graduated from the University of Delaware with a Bachelor of Arts degree and received a Master of Arts degree in political science from Rutgers University. All right. And has produced more than 20 films. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. Ah, uh -huh. And joining her today is T.C. Stallings. Now, some of you might recognize him from a few f films that he's done recently. He's a former professional athlete who is now in film and television. In 2004, a great story, T.C. landed a spot on Animal Planet's King of the Jungle where he emerged as his show's champion. 2011, he was in the movie Courageous. His breakout performance was in 2015 when he was that kind of bad guy in the film <laughs> War Room. T.C. entered ministry in 2003 and has been a keynote speaker in and out of the country. 12 one T.C. became an author by the release of his new book, The Pursuit, 14 Ways in 14 Days to Passionately Seek God's Purpose for Your Life. T.C. is married to his college sweetheart, Lavette Stallings. They have two children and live in Southern California. And we're here today to talk about a movie that's going to be releasing tomorrow night nationwide 661 different theaters yes. but before i get to you guys talking i want to let everybody see just a little bit of this movie by showing them the trailer here we are question of faith yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i shall fear no evil what have i told you about texting and driving She's fighting for her life. Eric has suffered a traumatic brain injury. I'm remanding you to the juvenile detention center. I promised that I would do everything I can to save Michelle. The only thing me and Teresa have been doing is trusting in the Lord, and look where it's gotten us. I don't want your promises. I want a second opinion, and that's exactly what I intend on getting. It's in God's hands now, and he's going to get us through this. You no, we want do not need doctor. another doctor. You, of all people, know we can't question his work. David, we're men of God. We made a commitment to choose a path he chose for us, not the one we want to choose. All of the answers to our suffering can be found right there. I was so angry with God, I ran away from him, but not today. Lord, I ask that you send us a blessing. I am going to run toward God, and I ask all in this house to run with me. Question of Faith. You have made over 20 movies, yes. and yet this one is going theatrical. Yeah. What's the difference? Why this one and why now? I think God just, there's an anointing over the film, and I think God just put his hand on it to allow me to even have this opportunity to go theatrical. A lot of times we have our own plans, but God has a different plan. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happened with this film, because it was not designed, Tom, to go theatrical. But God had a different, different really? thing in mind, yes. So when you were reading it and going into development, mm -hmm. you hadn't planned on taking this out. You planned Not to take all. it to television. To television like I normally do. I normally do three to four feature films a year, and I have a system. And with TV, is a quick system. You turn it around in about 120 days, and that's what I expected to do. <laughs> this was supposed to be done and aired and out by April this year. But it's funny how God will intervene and change the course of your direction, and that's what happened here. Is there one specific thing that happened? I mean, I'm really intrigued now. Well, we let somebody see it, and they started crying. Mm -hmm. And then we said, wait a minute, we might have something here. Then we let somebody else see it. They're like, this is so powerful. People need to see this story. 
And I said, okay, well, let me try to see if we can get a distribution deal. Then we had all these companies who wanted it. And then wow. I said, oh, we must have something special. That's really <laughs> fun. Well, I, I've got to be honest. Um, <clears throat> I had just returned from China. Okay. And we were provided with a screener. I wasn't able to watch it, but I had someone screen it for me. And I okay. said, now, is this a movie we need to talk So through the guys sobbing, trying to <laughs> tell me, oh, gosh. I said, okay, wait a minute. No, he was, he was really moved. And so then I was talking to Paul Lauer, a guy who's helping to release the film. And he said, Tom, he said, I don't know of a man, woman, or child who's seen this movie that has not been moved to tears. Absolutely. Now, Move to tears can do a lot of different things. It can mean a happy move to tears. Yes. It can mean a sad move to tears. TC, why don't you talk to us a little bit about what we want them to do with those tears? Yeah, I think you get both, and uh, and I love it. You know, I love the fact that you know the scripture promises a lot of blessings, and we people get excited about those a lot of good things. Uh, but scripture also promises a lot of pain, a lot of troubles. You know, anybody who chooses to live a godly life will be persecuted. In this life, you will have trouble, all those things. So you got a film that prepares you for that side. And so, you know, you're going to cry a little bit because you can maybe identify with the pain a little bit or you'll wonder, like, gosh, what would I do if I was in that situation? But then you see some, some, some breakthroughs and you see some things that make you cry about that just because you're happy. So you get both of them. Now, TC, you're, you're saying that that as Christians, we actually have problems sometimes? <laughs> yeah, isn't that, isn't, that, isn't that amazing how that, uh, it, you know, and it's funny how, it, I mean, it's, it's literally a promise. It's not something that you like, oh, it kind of happens from being a Christian. Jesus promises that this is going to happen. Like, hey, this is what you're signing up for. And so I think it's important that we as Christians are prepared to not only receive the blessings, but to receive the tough times and persecutions. And then it makes it, a, you, you'll have an answer to that. You know, why me, God? Well, because you signed up to follow me. And, and, and the world gives me trouble when I was here, so they're going to give you trouble. That's my promise, right? Well, here's how you prepare for that. It's coming. Get ready. And so this film kind of goes that route. Now, you sound like you legitimately know what you're talking about here. <laughs> you guys sound like this is really part of who and what you are. Talk to me a little bit about your faith and what that means to you and the embodiment of this film. Absolutely. I'm, I've been a Christian my entire life, and it's interesting when you, you enter into entertainment, you have to make decisions, which you shouldn't have to make decisions, but I knew I had to keep God first, and so it's taken me a little bit longer to even become in this position because everybody in Hollywood does not always agree, but God has always ordered my steps, and when the perfect opportunity arose for me to do this, I was so blessed and happy to, to be able to profess loudly the love of Jesus Christ. So it's been a personal personal journey for me to do this film. That's great. You know, I'm just, I'm just proud of you, for you guys standing up for what you believe and then yet finding something that really resonates with an audience. I mean, we've all seen lots of movies that have the label Christian on them that we're not really excited about, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. sometimes when you put that moniker on it, a Christian film, people stay away in droves. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is it about this film that people should go out and see and what separates it, what breaks it out of the pack? TC, well, I mean, why don't you go first? From, from my perspective, I just think that it's dealing with something that it doesn't matter who you are, you will experience it. You know, you can't take tragedy and put it in a Christian box or a black box or a white box or a color box or a gender box or anything box. Tragedy, pain, suffering, that can hit anybody. Probably, you know, it, it's something that everybody will deal with. So this film just shows how a Christian deals with it and it offers an answer. And then that person comes along and, and watches it and they decide, you know, if I want that answer. Obviously, if you're a Christian, it's going to affirm what you already believe. Uh, it may challenge you if you failed in this area of, of trusting God no matter what. But if you're, if you're not a Christian, I mean, you'll, you'll see how Christians do it. If you're not a person of faith, you'll see what can happen if you do have faith. So, mm -hmm. but pain doesn't have uh, any kind of box you can put it in. Every individual on this earth is susceptible to it. And so this is a film about how to deal with it. So it's just, it's, it's, it's not for any one anything. Uh, as long as you can experience pain, this is a film you can watch. Let's go to another role and we'll, we call this one God's Choice. And then we'll come right back to you on it, Angela. I don't know what to do, see, so I mean, every contractor's booked. Well, not everyone. No, I am not dealing with that guy again. Look, look, I get it, all right? The man obviously has some issues. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah, that. well, I talked to Ed Reynolds yesterday, and he said Mr. Danielson is absolutely the best contractor on the list. Cecil so. But yeah, there, there's more. See, Mr. Danielson on the surface, 
Probably a little bit underneath, too. Seems like a really bad guy. Probably is. I don't know. But you know, in talking to Ed, I find out that the guy, his business is struggling, for one thing. And then on top of that, the man is dealing with some serious family issues. He's got a lot going on. I mean, shouldn't we work with a contractor that wants to work with us? Well, maybe that'll make you feel more comfortable. But that's not who we are. David, we're men of God. That means we made a commitment to choose a path he chose for us, not the one we want to choose. So David, we go where he tells us to go. We do what he tells us to do, even if it makes us uncomfortable. Wow. Good, huh? Tell us what did we just see. You just saw an amazing scene between T.C. Stallings' character, Cecil King, and Richard T. Jones' character, David Newman, where he's basically his conscience. A lot of times, we don't like to forgive people. That's a hard concept for a lot of people to receive. Even when we say, I forgive you, do you truly forgive? And what's so good, he's telling us how God wants us to be, not what we think it should be. And it should be free, and it should be given with compassion. And that's what we were trying to teach in that scene. I understand that there's really three kind of competing stories that kind of collide here. Yes. Some, um, the gentleman who helped screen it for me said it kind of compares to traffic a little bit, mm. that it's, a, it's a, a tragic thing happens, and out of that, this merging of all these things. So when people walk out of this movie theater, what do you want them to be saying and doing? What's their, what's their response? What, what is the walk away? I would love for people to walk away and understand God's love, his love and his grace and mercy for all of us. No matter what we go through too, he has already ordered our steps. He has already prepared us for the journey. No matter how horrible a situation might seem, he's already going to be covering us. He already has it all figured out. And a lot of times we get stuck in our own way and we just don't trust in him. I would love for people to learn just trust in him. It will work out. Wow. Um, just watching some of the clips, there's, I see there, there's a prison scene. Yes. There's a driving scene. Yes. <laughs> if, I, if I had to, you to describe three of the themes, three of the themes in here, TC, where would you go with this? Uh, I would go with uh, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I would go with, uh, and I don't know if we use the word tragedy, but if I had to make it a little bit longer, just, I just how to deal with tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, and then faith. You know, those themes are, are just throughout, you know, every, every family is dealing with it, and they're just dealing with it in their own way. And then she mentioned purpose, you know, which is, which is really a big theme. And because everybody, they, they say they're a Christian, but then they, they go their own way. And she just said that, you know, God's got it worked out. And in, even in that scene, I'm talking to David, like, listen, you got to do what God wants you to do. You got to trade in your will for his will, and you know better. But yeah, we choose, like, and I, in this moment, I, God, you're going to have to give me a pass. Like, <laughs> I think this film bucks against doing that. It's like you can't only do it when you feel it. You got to yeah. do it all the time. And then also when she talked about everything working out, when we say everything's going to work out as a Christian, that does not mean you're always going to win. Mm -hmm. It just means that his plan will go forth. So you may, you may lose a loved one. That's part of God's plan, working out. And your thing should be, does that person know the Lord? And if they do, then celebrate, because actually they're in a better place than you are. As hard as that is for a human to to you know, conceptualize, it's the truth. Yeah. So it's just working out is not this thing where everything's fluffy and beautiful. Sometimes it's that way and it's great, but other times it's, it's painful. But you know what, give me the strength to get through that pain. And then that, that's when people glorify God. Like, how are you dealing with that like that? Yeah. It ain't me, it's the Holy Spirit on the inside. And they're like, well, I want a piece of that. It's like, well, you've done your job wow. as a disciple now. <laughs> wow. You know, when I, I had the opportunity to produce a film, uh, The End of the Spear, and really that story was about five young men whose lives were taken from them at an early age. And the accomplishment of their death was probably more significant, even if they would have continued to live. Mm -hmm. Because after the years of that tragedy happening, the Bible schools in this country sent more missionaries than we ever have in the history of our nation because they said, if those men were willing to die for their faith, I need to be willing to live for mine. And it mm. basically went out yeah. to the mission field in mass number. So that's always a painful thing, that, that death is really part of this process sometimes. Nobody once believes for, no. we all trust, and hanging on for that 80 plus years, mm -hmm. you know, but sometimes we see, see things happen like that. When we talk about things like this, it doesn't sound fun. 
Right. It doesn't sound entertaining when we sit there and talk about sacrifice and <laughs> death and, you know, so, so what are we doing in, in, in making a film about this and when people see it, they're crying. Yes. So what I want to make sure is I leave people with the right impression. You're not going to go out and have a bad time. Right. You're going to go out and get encouraged because you're going to see how what? How God can move in your life. Okay. Mm -hmm. How God can change your life. This is a transformative film. You're going to think about issues of, am I being good to my fellow neighbor? Can I be better to my family? Should I be home more? Do I need to put God first more? Do I need to be in my Bible more? And that's how people leave our screenings. That we've been screening all over the country. Wow. They said, I need to go home and make sure I kiss my wife. I need to go home and make sure I'm home for my kids. Wow. I need to appreciate life. Yeah, wow. and, and to add on to that, it's, it's, it's tragedy turned into something beautiful. And what I mean by that is, and, and my example is, is, is nowhere as good, is, is, the movie isn't as good as my example, because I'm about to talk about Jesus and his death. But, you know, Jesus was beaten, not, not, not a good thing to see. He was whipped, not a good thing to see. He was hung on a cross, not a good thing to see. Bled, you know, died. None of that's good. But the resurrection just made it awesome. Like, so that's, that's the thing about it. It's like you'll see a lot of tragedy, but it's how people deal with it. So, yeah, you're crying because of the tragedy, but you're also crying and celebrating and happy at how people take it head on and deal with it, regardless yeah. of how tough it was. So there's a nice balance there. Yeah. yeah and I be never, inspired when they leave. Yeah, a, a, a message of Bishop Jake's priest was Sunday's on its way. Mm -hmm. You know, and he would talk about Friday, but oh, Sunday's on its way. Yeah. And you know, it's just the hope that we have. I mean, that is so powerful. Let's go to another clip. I, I wanna go to the one where the um, mom challenges the son oh, to yeah. pray for folks. Let, let's watch one. that clip. You want me to pray with, I'm, I'm sorry, pray for them, mom? Pray for them. Yes, son. I, I can't imagine what that mother and her daughter are going through. I mean, compassion is, is something we can't just save for our brothers and sisters. It has to be, as the Lord has shown, given to everyone without exception. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so there's a lot going on here. First of all, let me just say, these performances are amazing. Oh, thank you. Talk to me a little bit about your cast. Oh, this, we were blessed to have this cast. It stars Richard T. Jones, Kim Fields, C. Thomas Howe. T.C. Stallings, Greg Allen Williams, Jackie Velasquez, and Renee O'Connor, and they're all seasoned pros. They've all been in the business for years, perfecting their craft. So when they were able to come on set and, as we call, play, it was a joy to see. There, there wasn't really much we had to do. They just embodied the character and just became the character. When people see the film sometimes, they really believe these actors were the characters. Wow. So we were really blessed to have a seasoned cast. Well, you're the same on that couch right here as you are on that movie, <laughs> sitting there ministering. You know, there's, there's always, you know, I, I love the atmosphere of being behind the scenes, being able to talk about this, because what happens on a movie set, you know, you've done at least 20 plus movies, and you've done four or five already, and you're on the way to, well, you've done five more that are yeah, ready to come. Yeah, this is my 15th film. Man. 15th film. Yeah. So you, we're all in the same leg, done somewhere around that 20 film mark. So when you start to think about that, there's always a dynamic that happens on every movie set. Tell us about this family dynamic on this movie and, and what it was, what it was like. Well, it was fun. It was fun for me. I mean, you're talking about a guy who, like I said, I, I grew up wanting to play football, and I'm watching, you know, these guys and gals on television as a kid. And so I'm not saying to myself at that point, you know, I'm thinking about what team I'm gonna go to. You're saying they're old. <laughs> now you're trying to get me beat up when we reunite. We, we, no, I, I'm just saying that for me, I'm thinking about what team I'm going to play for, not, hey, I'm going to share the stage with these guys. I'm going to share the screen with these guys. We're going to be trading lines someday. I'm totally not thinking about that. Then, you know, 20, 25 years later, that's exactly what's happening. So when I walk into the room and I see all the people that she just named, I'm just like, okay, this is, God, you're, your plans are just, just amazing to me. And so we laughed a lot and, and we talked about some of the things that we are dealing with in our own personal lives. So you get to get to know how they're living out their lives, how their careers are going, do they identify with any of the characters, and everybody's just cutting up and laughing, and then boom, now you get this chemistry. And now, now we're ready to shoot the film. And, and we've been laughing and talking and eating, and so it, it comes off authentic when you watch. So, Angela, are you one of those hands-on producers? Are you, like, right in the middle of it? Are you on the set right there? 
I am Tom. Okay. I, I'm involved in every aspect of all my films. I like to know the actors. It's hard for me to even help give any direction, and not directly to the actors, but whether it's to the writers or other producers mm -hmm. and the director. I have to know the people I'm working with, and I like for them to know me. It has to become a family across the board. That's that's great. So were you in during the auditions? Did you actually go to the auditions with the director and sat okay. side by side? Absolutely. I handpicked almost every single actor in this film. Every single one. Every single audition, I was right there. So you had, to be, you had to be elated with this cast when it all, the dust settled. Absolutely. I think this cast, it just worked out. God is amazing like that. There were some people that never acted before, and they're in this film. And now they've booked feature films and TV shows. It's just been amazing. Well, when I, was, when I was watching your trailer and some of the clips, I recognize most of these people. I've seen them in films, television performances throughout. So it's like, you know how sometimes you go to a film and you don't know anybody and you, you just get that little queasy edge starts to come <laughs> in like, I don't know what kind of movie it is. But you don't have that. I mean, when you start to watch this film, you say, these are veterans. These are yes. people that I'm immediately comfortable with. You know, it's always interesting to me is when people will talk about watching Joel Osteen on television. Um, it just, the thing about Joel's show to me, whatever you're watching it, is it just makes you relaxed because it's so professionally done. When you're watching a movie and you start to get a little, you know, that, your movie doesn't do that. It's definitely professional in every way and the performances were great and Thank moving you. performances. And again, Thank you. I cannot wait to see it. I'll, I'll be one of the guys that'll be out there watching, but when the guy who, uh, Shane Harwell's the guy who evaluated the film for me, he said, I cried like a baby, Tom. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> well, see, My wife will go the first night and she will bring 25 people the next night. Thank you. So yeah. listen, this thing opens tomorrow. Tell us why it's important for opening night. Opening night is very important, the entire weekend. If people want to say a statement to Hollywood, this is how you say it. The opening night and the opening weekend. Hollywood responds to profit margins. If people do not show their dollar or use their dollar as a statement, Hollywood would not continue doing inspirational films. Yep. So I encourage people, they say they want to see films with no violence. They, this film has no adultery. There's nothing negative in this film. It's a family-friendly film that you can take your children to go see. If you want to see more of this, you have to support us opening weekend. Amen. Uh, TVN Family and Partners, um, the mission that God spoke to me years ago was to reach a sight and sound generation with the gospel. We want to go out to the places, not just our churches. Please go to church. We encourage you to go to church. But you know what? This is kind of the marketplace. This is the place that Jesus would go. He would go out there and tell stories among the multitudes. That's what this is. They're taking a story that God has given them with a cast of people who have dedicated their lives to their craft and to Jesus, and they're taking that message out there. So I want to encourage you, tell everybody you know, all right, this is going to be a great film to see. I think it's really going to challenge you. I think it's going to say a lot to you, ministry, and encourage you. A question of faith. Tomorrow night, 661 theaters. Yes. If you don't know how, where it is, go to questionoffaith.com, and there you can click, and you can find your area right there, and you can find your theater starting time. But 661 theaters, it doesn't sound like a lot, but I promise that's pretty much all over the place. So look it up, get out there, and get a bunch of folks coming, and let people know it's important this weekend. Let's make a statement with this question of faith. We want to make sure we do that. We've got one last clip we want to show. Let's go right to that clip right now. I'm going to suspend the installation service. You want to take away the church from me now? You still want to take over the church, but right now your anger toward God shows all over you. In the pulpit, head home with your family. We're going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. Yes, you will. But what happens when a member loses someone and they need God's word to bring them comfort? Who's going to give it to them? You? I'm about the construction project. You're still the lead. I'm still counting on you to get it done. <laughs> wow. You know, every time you see a clip like that, I mean, as a producer, I know 
when I would sit in the room when a take was, was happening and you'd feel the dynamic in there. And I mean, sometimes people cry, sometimes people break down. It's, it's always hard to get that. So I've, tell me just a little bit about that scene, what that meant what, when that was happening. That was one of the most important scenes of the film where Richard T. Jones plays a man of God in the film and his father's also a man of God and he's realizing his son has lost his faith and he lets him know the answers are in his word. His so you're taking this on word. like real stuff that Christians actually do lose their faith and you're yes. basically dealing with those kind of yes, issues. Yes, and we're reminding you his answers are in his word. Open up your Bible. It's right there. Yeah. And in that scene... His son has to realize that, ask for forgiveness of losing his faith temporarily wow. and get resurrected, his wow. beliefs are resurrected. TC? Yeah, I just want to say you spoke earlier to just how beautifully the film was shot and uh, how it felt great and felt professional. And it's just so many people that don't get their names in the limelight that are behind it. So she, she had great cinematography. She had, you know, great music, you know, from Nelson and, and uh, Kevin Otto who directed, you know, just all the people behind it. They're the reason that it looks so, so good. You see us, but you don't see them. They're the reason that it looks great. And so yeah, I'm excited. I mean, last time I was in this position, you know, people went out, you know, you guys went out and you made a movie about Jesus and prayer, the number one movie in America. You can do that again. And now you're, because everybody was talking about prayer. So now you go and do that again. You have everybody talking about Jesus and forgiveness and, and having a strong faith. So hopefully everybody can get out and do it again. You know, I just want to say congratulations to you. Thank to you, you both and to your cast, your crew and team and all those who have been working behind the scenes diligently to get this movie out there. It's, it's a hard it's a hard job, isn't it? It is. You put so much on the line. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if your house is mortgaged. I've been there. <laughs> uh, Matt, Matt and Lori Crouch, they mortgage their homes. You know, you, sometimes you do whatever it takes to get that That's message right. out because there's nothing more important. There's nothing more important to us partners than you hearing and knowing the word of God, trusting and knowing that what we're going to present to you is something that you're going to love. Go see this movie. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.